Roll call, please. Commissioner Aikman? Present. Present. Commissioner Here. Present. Mayor Taylor. Present. Um, John, would you do our invocation tonight? Thank you. Commissioner Abraham, would you do our Pledge of Allegiance? I will. Um, would you pray with me? Oh, Holy Father, I pray that you'll watch over us this night. Give us wisdom where we lack it, and we do. Father, I pray that you'll help us to understand how we're to treat other people and to be kind and uh, considerate of others. I pray that you'll watch over us and our families and bless us in all we do. In Jesus' in the holy name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to its republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, John. Thank you, Commissioner. Welcome. Any additions or deletions, City Manager? There are none, Madam Mayor. Okay. So, Commissioner Abraham, you have the minutes? I do. <clears throat> I, move that the, I, re <coughs> I move that the reading of the minutes for June 21st, 2016, City Commission meeting be waived and that the minutes of said meetings prepared by the City Clerk be approved as written. Second. Aye. Commissioner Gulp? Aye. Commissioner Rose? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Taylor? Aye. Aye. Under motions, Commissioner Gulp. I move that the following documents and bids be received and filed. Certificate of Liability Insurance for Danny Cope and Sons. Software Service Agreement with Tyler Technologies for License of Software. Paducah McCracken County River Port Authority Fiscal 2017 Annual Operating Budget for Fiscal Year 16-17. Bids for Paducah Riverfront Development Authority. Demolition of Commercial Building at 501 North 3rd, 514 North Loop Road. Complete Demolition Services, Greer Excavating Services, LLC. Lanny Jones Excavating. Mike Good Excavating. Danny Cope and Sons Excavating, LLC. Second. City Clerk. Mr. Abraham? Aye. Mr. Aye. Commissioner Rose? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. 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 Commissioner, um, we're under our municipal orders. Commissioner Rhodes. Okay. Upon recommendation of the city manager, the board of commissioners of the city of Paducah, <coughs> order that the personal changes on the attached list be approved. Second. <clears throat> Hi, Steve. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Any questions? Go ahead. Um, we, we do have the um, assistant to the city manager on the personnel actions tonight. We, we do have significance. Uh, this action would hire Michelle Smolin. Um, I have put a bio in front of you uh, for, for Michelle. Uh, Michelle would be coming to us from Olathe, Kansas, where she currently works for the city of Olathe, a um, city of about 130,000. Um, comes with very good uh, recommendations. Um, she has a, her master's degree in public administration from, from Kansas, one of the top public administration schools uh, in, in the country. Uh, we conducted an exhaustive uh, search, nationwide search process. We had 140 applications. We whittled it down to eight. We did telephone interviews with, and we eventually did did four people we invited in for face-to-face -face interviews, and and uh, Michelle got down between her and an, another young woman, and and eventually make the recommendation to uh, select uh, Michelle. And just looking at her bow, she looks like she'd be a very good fit for Paducah. She she, and she will be mayor. And she she will have to judge our barbecue here because it's not like Kansas barbecue, right? She's already been warned about uh, <laughs> that. Um, she she uh, her and her husband her husband's an interior designer. They toured the community um, and said there's nothing like this really in in all of the Kansas City uh, metro area. I think they're they're very excited about the prospect. 
quite notably, Michelle will be um, our project manager for the Tyler Technology Software we uh, purchased at the last meeting. Um, that was, uh, I think, a very critical mistake we made when we bought HTE some 27 years ago. There was no project manager and it, it languished uh, for years. Um, Michelle has already been getting the emails, the contracts, the, the stuff. She's asked for that stuff ahead of time so that when she gets here on the 21st, uh, she'll hit the ground running. Um, the Tyler folks will be here uh, the 25th uh, to kick off our project. So having her here by the, by the 21st is, is critical uh, for, uh, for us, even though she has to move here from Kansas City. City clerk. Aye. 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 Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Taylor. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. I move that a municipal order entitled a municipal order authorizing the mayor to execute a grant application and all documents necessary through the Kentucky Office of Homeland Security for funds in the amount of two hundred and thirty nine thousand eight hundred and nine dollars for the Paducah nine one one Service Communications Department to purchase and install a new 911 communication phone system be adopted. Second. Hi, Steve. Hi. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, City Manager. Uh, this is uh, uh, an attempt to apply for a grant for the telephony that we've discussed at length as part of our capital capital infrastructure over at 911. Uh, telephony was one of the items that we talked about. It's how we receive our 911 calls, and this is an attempt at a grant to assist us in purchasing that equipment. Okay. I, I, I like to think it's a very strong attempt uh, at a grant. We're uh, as optimistic about this as we um, can be within reason. We discussed it firsthand with staff at 911, and uh, obviously the uh, modern equipment is important to performance as well as allowing enhancements that new technology uh, allows. So we're very excited about this as well as the prospect of, of state funding. Are there just are there any areas where once we get you know we get the preferably we'll get the grant and we can get this upgrade some of the things that the new technology will allow us to do that we that we don't have the capability of doing now that's that's you <laughs> yeah, I mean just just a couple of things you know that's always kind of interesting when you yep. um, great. good evening mayor commissioners um, one thing that we'll be able to do with that is we're coming into the next generation phase of being able to text 911 um, videos, pictures. If, if somebody gets on a scene of an accident, they'll be able to take a snapshot of that, deliver that to us, and then we can tell the first responders more accurately what they're going to go see when, right. before they get there and kind of help them prepare. Um, <clears throat> another thing as far as helping uh, a law enforcement perspective of that is uh, we get in a vehicle pursuit, obviously it crosses county lines a lot of times. Uh, we can take the data that we've already collected and push that off to the next dispatch center. Instead of having to set and tell them everything that we've already gained, we can give them that information via software and they'll have that to forward that on to the next county, whatever happens on that pursuit. So there's a few things like that that we're going to be able to do. Um, eventually we'll be able to... Uh, get coordinates on what we call XYZ, where say if you're on the 10th floor of the Jackson house, we can tell that you're on the 10th floor. Right now, we don't know that. Uh, we know you're there, but we don't know exactly what floor that you, you may be on. So that's some other technology that's out there that we'll be able to Yeah, and have. times matters. Right. It matters. Okay. So texting will be part of this from early on? We think? Well, it's, it's going to be one of those things that we'll have the ability to do. Uh, I don't know if that we'll do it Early on, I think it's something we've got. It's still very the new. Yeah, it's, it's in its infancy right now across the United States, and there's been some testing on it. Um, but next well, it, it is what he's talking about. The carriers are they all have to be up to that level to, for our area, okay. and that's not being done nationwide yet. So the the trunks, as as they refer to them, the AT and T trunks that are in this area, are updated to handle that at this point in time as I understand it. Right. Right. And if you okay. try to text 911 right now, you're going to get a message on your phone saying it's not available in your area. Uh, you'll get that. So, But eventually it'll be there. Um, there's a lot of questions still that's out there. We've got to decide how much workload that's going to put on the dispatchers. 
Uh, one thing that we can't do with texting the 911 is right now, if you call from a cell phone, we can track you. We know where you are. Uh, right now, the texting don't give you that location. Uh, that's one thing that eventually they'll have to work on to get that location given to us once they do the texting. So there are several benefits to it. Um, uh, and that's future. that's that's really great because it's 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 an emergency situation. So being able to locate someone exactly where sure. they are and those type of things, and, that's, that's good. And the texting part, we're seeing that that typically the kids that are between 13 and 18 or 19 do not use a phone to call on. They're texting, and they're going to be more. They're going to text us before they call us. Right. Um, that's just the way of the world. That's where we're going. And the uh, the state of Kentucky 911 office um, put together a next generation report, ran what seven eight years ago, anticipating some of these technological advancements and some of these additional capabilities. And I think that the um, grant funding that's available um, for these upgrades reflects uh, what I think the state's value for that is. Uh, awareness of what the technological capabilities are as well as what those things can do as you mentioned and I think increasingly as the public becomes aware of that their expectation for us right. to incorporate that into our service delivery is going to grow as well so this isn't just a matter of getting rid of a bunch of old phones because they might stop working and ringing this is also upgrading the technology to allow us to really expand our services and just what was mentioned in right. terms of the information the upgrades, the photos that can come across and everything else is, it's really, it's exciting. But of course, like so many other things like that, the manageability of that is part of the implementation. Thank you. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> okay. City Clerk. Mr. Abraham. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Abraham. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance adopting the City of Paducah, Kentucky annual budget for the fiscal year of July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017 by estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. This ordinance is summarized as follows. Adopting the City of Paducah annual budget for fiscal year uh, July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017 by estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government at $80,589,395 and summarized by funds as follows. General, $33,478,200. MAP, one million five hundred and four dollars. What? One million five hundred and four thousand dollars. Investments. Uh, five million twenty-two thousand five hundred. CDBG. Two million two hundred and twenty thousand. E nine one one. One million seven hundred fifty-six thousand two hundred and eighty. Court awards. Thirty thousand seven hundred and fifty. Debt. Three million four hundred sixty-eight thousand. 995, uh, let's see, CIP 7,485,000, bond fund 8,350,000, solid waste 5,644,750, civic center 90,600, rental 134,920, uh, radio DEPR 2,435,840, Fleet, uh, 557,485. Fleet Trust, 2,058,250. Mm -hmm. Self Insurance, 1,224,000. Health Insurance, 3,773,000. And AEPFPFPFTRSTS, <laughs> 1,354,825. For a total of eighty million five hundred and eighty nine thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars. Second. <laughs> Good job. You're welcome. Mr. Warren will make you sign the text. <laughs> okay, we've discussed the budget. 
uh, several times, so I think everyone's satisfied with our budget um, and that we've managed our funds in such a way as to not raise taxes and to accomplish so many of the things that we've done in the past year for the city. So we're looking forward to um, continuing a lot of those wonderful things into 2017. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Gold. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Commissioner Galt. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor to execute an agreement for operation of public access channels 2 and 11 and other related services. This ordinance is summarized as follows, that the mayor is hereby authorized and directed to execute a contract between the city of Paducah, West Kentucky Community and Technical College, and Paducah Junior College in the amount not to exceed $85,000 for operation of public access channels 2 and 11 and related services for the city. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Gold. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance authorizing the finance director to pay for the lease of two temporary pumps, which were utilized from the end of December 2015 through May 2016 at pump station number nine, located at 1148 South Third Street, due to pump number two becoming inoperable. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The City of Paducah hereby authorizes the Finance Director to pay Xylem Dewatering Solutions Incorporated in the amount of $33,064.10 for the lease of two temporary emergency pumps that were utilized at pump station number nine, located at 1148 South Third Street. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Gold. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute change order number one with Mid-States Construction Company, Inc. for the construction of a pocket park, also known as the Market Square Art Park, located at 117 half South 2nd Street. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The mayor is hereby authorized to execute change order number one for an increase in the amount of $6,712.06 with Mid-States Construction Company, Inc. for numerous issues which arose during construction of the park at park located at 117.5 South 2nd Street, therefore increasing the total cost to $51,083.06. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. <coughs> Aye. Commissioner Gold. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. We'll go on to our ordinances introduction, so we do not uh, vote on these tonight. Commissioner Abraham. <clears throat> I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a service agreement with Motorola for fiscal year 2016 through 2017. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The mayor is hereby authorized to execute a service agreement with Motorola for yearly maintenance of the 800 uh, megahertz radio controllers, uh, 911 dispatch consoles, telephones, and other related radio equipment in the amount of 30, $32,166.48. This contract shall expire June 30th, 2017. Second. Brad. That, uh, I guess that sounds familiar to you. I think I was up for a couple of weeks ago with a similar contract. And what's happened is we, after that, we polled all the city departments that had portable radios and mobile radios on that contract. And they've elected to take those radios off the contract, which reduces our cost by a little over twelve thousand dollars a year. So uh, that we was at forty four, we're down to like thirty two thousand. Great, it's always good reduction. City manager, do you have anything to say? Um, especially, I think when um, some of them aren't being used anymore. So um, yeah. <laughs> we're down to uh, mm -hmm. making sure that all the radios that we are covering our in use and for sure. Yeah, it was a good move for, for everybody to do what they did, so. Okay. Thank you. Every year. Commissioner Galt. 
I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled an ordinance authorizing the finance director to pay Kentucky League of Cities for workers' compensation, liability insurance, and property insurance coverage for the City of Paducah. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The City of Paducah hereby authorizes the finance director to pay Kentucky League of Cities in the total amount of $1,092,016.26 for workers' compensation, liability insurance, and property insurance coverage for the City of Paducah for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017. 2017. Second. Uh, Steve. It's, it's a big number, but there's relatively good news uh, this year. Uh, it represents only a less than 1% increase uh, from, from last year. Uh, the Kentucky League of Cities um, supplies all of our lines of insurance, all the, the different liabilities, auto insurance, property, uh, virtually everything we have insured is covered uh, uh, through them. So we're, we're Pretty happy with the the return in our in our premium. Um, um, we will pay um, an increase. It is uh, forty three thousand dollars, but of that forty three thousand dollars, thirty three of it belongs to nine one one. We didn't pay their bill last year. The the board paid theirs separately. So we're 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 beginning to do all the the combinations um, of of things uh, together. So, but if you if you took nine one one out, it, it was it was the total increase on a million on more than a million dollars was less than ten thousand bucks. Commissioner Rhodes, I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled "An Ordinance of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, Improving an Agreement with Concord Fire Protection District for Dispatch Services." and authorizing the mayor to execute said agreement. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The city of Paducah hereby approves a communication service agreement with Concord Fire Protection District for 911 dispatch services, which will begin on July 1st, 2016, and authorizes the mayor to execute the agreement. The initial term of the agreement shall be a period of four years. Such term shall automatically renew at the end of the initial term and any subsequent terms thereafter for an additional four years, unless either the city or Concord decide to terminate or renegotiate the agreement. Second. Good evening again, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this is the first of two contracts that we're presenting to, to you tonight uh, for 911 services to be provided to the outlying fire districts, uh, Concord and West McCracken. Concord's one you have in front of you now uh, that have been approved by their boards uh, to sign a contract for service from us. <coughs> Give me anything Anyone have any that? questions or comments? And we're still efforting agreements with the other three rural fire departments. Uh, I think that's worthy of mention as well. So, so what happens to the others' calls during this time? I mean, they handle them themselves. Um, no. Uh, what uh, we think will occur uh, for those that have not signed on prior to July one. They were uh, essentially piggybacking on the county under the previous interlocal. And since we're extending the interlocal for 30 days or up to 30 days, July 1, with the county, then that service to the rural fire departments would continue under the county auspices. Um, but we believe that in as much as the rural fire departments are um, independent entities, that it's in the best interests of them and us to have bilateral agreements between the city and the respective rural fire departments. We do know that two of the boards are meeting tonight, Reedland and Lone Oak, um, and Hendron's not meeting until July the 11th. This is their next board meeting. Okay. Carol. I, and to that, and, and as well, I, I would like to commend the chief Chief Kyle, Chief Barnhill, and the city manager as well. Um, I'm not sure this commission knows how hard these people have worked to get a contract together and a proposal together to the county and to all. I mean, literally, I've had a ringside seat to watch this, and it's been almost two years, I would say. I mean, would you not agree, city manager, that it's been a long time coming from the time that consultants came in and we've worked with the board and... Yeah, and you know, it, it really all, uh, the genesis for it all was, I think, a recognition of the need to move forward with some improvements in the 911 system. Correct. In the interest of the taxpayers of, of Paducah and McCracken County. 
And, and I can honestly say, I think beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is fiscally responsible. It will save money. It will provide better services. It will make the taxpayers' safety the most important thing, as well as the first responders and law enforcement all the way around. It's the most responsible thing to do. I know you've served on the 911 board as a city's representative, so you've had that firsthand seat uh, to watch through all of this. So thank you all for all the work you've done. They've worked very, very hard. You're very welcome, and uh, Commissioner, we, we appreciate all the support you've given us while you've been on the board. I mean, uh, you've, you've been a very valuable asset to have, and we've appreciated all your time that you've been right there with us, so thank you. <laughs> Just don't make me go to Frankfurt again. <laughs> Well, I know we're going to be approving the others, too. You know, next is West McCracken and then an extension on the county. But I think the important message really is that when people call 911, you're going to respond. That's correct. They're going to get, an, they're going to get someone there. Right here in McCracken County. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, that is the important message, and I, yeah. I just can't stress that enough how important it is. New, new equipment coming, I mean, just all the way around. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Wilson. I move that the Board of Mich Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled, An Ordinance of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, Approving an Agreement with West McCracken Fire Protection District for Dispatch Services and authorizing the Mayor to execute said agreement. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The City of Paducah hereby approves a communication service agreement with West McCracken Fire Protection District for 911 dispatch services, which will begin on July 1, 2016, and authorizes the Mayor to execute the agreement. The initial term of the agreement shall be for a period of four, year term, four years. Such term shall automatically renew at the end of the initial term and any subsequent terms thereafter for an additional four years unless either the city or Concord decide to terminate or renegotiate the agreement. Second. Steve. Same, same thing. Comments. Same thing. Next step. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Again. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Abraham. <clears throat> I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled An Ordinance of the City of Paducah, Kentucky, approving an agreement with McCracken County Fiscal Court to extend the current interlocal cooperation agreement for 911 communication services and authorizes the mayor to execute said agreement. This ordinance is summarized as follows The City of Paducah hereby approves a temporary 911 communications service agreement with McCracken County Fiscal Court to extend the current 911 interlocal agreement for 911 dispatch services up to and including July 31st, 2016. Further, the mayor of the city is hereby authorized to execute the agreement. Second. So we're, we're glad to have um have the county on board with us too and uh, we hope that we will provide such good service that they will want to stay with us in the future we have we have a way of proving ourselves here and um, so we hope we can move forward with that in the future absolutely mm -hmm. city managers report uh, I'm going to ask Steve uh, Irvin to come forward um, he's going to be uh, presenting an item at the next meeting um, associated with uh, the latest effort to progress the Broadway and Jefferson uh, bike path issues. So he wants to provide you with some preliminary information tonight. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Uh, as you may remember, um, November or so of last year, we applied for a transportation alternative program grant, and that was going to uh, uh, be used to fund engineering services as well as actually bidding the project and, con and constructing the project. It was anticipated the entire project to be somewhere around $500,000. Uh, early this year, we received word that we had not received um, that grant. At that time, it was uh, we believed that uh, it would have been very helpful that if we already had the engineering study in hand when we made the application to the transportation cabinet. Uh, with that being said, over the last six weeks or so, I have been working with HDR HDR Engineering uh, out of out of Paducah uh, to uh, come up with an engineering services agreement, and I have one in hand now that I'd like to bring to the. 
um, city commission at the next meeting. And it really outlines uh, all the different services that they'll be providing from the traffic study to the signing study, pavement marking plan, and really a set of construction documents that we'll be able to go to bid out. Uh, it's our anticipation that this fall we'll have the traffic study in hand and then we'd like to go back to the transportation county apply for that tap grant again and hopefully this time we'll be successful since we had that study in hand thank you steve that's good work mm -hmm. thank you thank you i, I think that... it's uh, always a good idea to pursue a grant if there's an opportunity there and right. so we kind of made a pragmatic decision try to try to get a grant for the study and or, and then the, and the engineering and then proceed with the project implementation uh, grant application afterwards. But I, th I think this is the only grant I'm aware of that we haven't got that we've applied for. <laughs> and, I mean, we've, we have a very, very high success rate. Unfortunately, this one uh, didn't go. So we, we have money in a project fund um, that was originally appropriated by the investment fund for downtown ramp plan improvements. So it's from that fund that we would draw this sixty thousand dollars steve i guess yeah, 63 around. and make the decision or the commission would have the opportunity to make the decision to pay for this out of monies in hand so that as steve says we have the study done and we can make a stronger application for the the really big money for the implementation part what also we'll have from this is really a completion of our of our bike plan or our loop let's call it and really it'll extend from noble park uh, all the way down to uh, where phase five of the Greenway Trail will end, which is Jefferson Street. Um, that's important because part of the scoring through the transportation cabinet is also done by their bicycle coordinator or the transportation cabinet. We get extra points, I believe, if we come to them with a bike plan in place when we make the application. Thank you. How, how's the signage coming along? You know, we talked about that a few weeks ago. For which project? The ramp. It's part of the ramp, some signage. Was we, it from the grant? Yes, we are working on that. Okay. Working on the grant. Mm -hmm. Or has it been submitted? I mean, it, it has been submitted, that's correct. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Steve earns his money, doesn't he? <laughs> that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Well, I think we can all be proud as a community with the um, playground. Absolutely. The, it's fantastic. And I know Commissioner Rhodes logged um, many, many hours there. You worked, I think, every day. I was a slacker. I was only there a day and a half. Anyway. I was only there a day, but it was good. <laughs> it was hot. It's a lot so, of work. It's something our community should be really, absolutely. really proud of. And then future development there around that area, I think, will just be uh, icing on the cake. It'll yeah. be great to see it. And, you know, the, the best part about it was just so many people that uh, wanted to be a part of that and wanted to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people that will be able to say, you know, kids can say years from now, you know, my dad or my grandmother helped build that or my grandfather helped build that or my uncle helped build that. And uh, to me, that's what makes our community so great. It's, it, it's really unique because a lot of the people that worked on that project uh, maybe had never spent that much time in that community at all. Uh, now they have some ownership there. So uh, that, I really think that that playground, um, in addition with the other aspects of the wellness park, will be a catalyst for exactly what you said, Commissioner. Uh, folks with entrepreneurial spirit, this is where people are. So maybe some of those vacant buildings there will turn into eateries or whatever. Um, but that part of uh, the north side has been uh, vacant for so long, and now it, it looks like life is being pumped back in there. So that's that's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that's how we build our city back. Absolutely. By revitalizing all these neighborhoods. All right. Any public comments tonight? And we don't have an executive session, so meetings adjourned. <laughs>